Well, hello and welcome to Selby Free Lakes in South Yorkshire. This is a bit of a nostalgic thing for me because I used to fish this lake about 15 years ago and I've not seen it since then and it's vastly changed. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It's late September and it's that time of the year when everything is a mega rush, especially if you're fishing overnight, it's because the, the dark nights are drawing in, you're finished work, you're desperate to get down to the lake and put your rods out. And that's what it's basically been for me today because I've been on another lake, I've been on one of my syndicate lakes and the fish are feeding on there. I've managed three fish today, all over 35 pounds. So I've pulled off one lake to come to this lake. Apparently this place is fishing as well. I've seen some nice catches on the DNA page over the last few days from some of the members on here. So there's loads to go at, but basically what we're gonna be talking about is not just the nostalgic side of things on this lake with regards to my own fishing, but also carp fishing for big fish at this time of the year. That's what we're gonna be trying to catch from here. We've only got a couple of days fishing, so it's probably gonna be um, a little bit of a tricky task for me, but you never know because this lake's got some big fish in it and it is that time of the year when the biggins get caught and it's also pretty good conditions as well. There's a low pressure front that's just been um, moved in, in the last 24 hours, hence why I've ended up with some big fish on my syndicate lake. So today, you never know what might happen on this one. So I've got the bivvy up, and basically I'm around in this room that's called the Brambles and I've not fished here for a while. I've only got my rods and my bivvy with me at the moment. I've got to go back to the car and get the rest of the gear. So before the dark draws in, what I want to do is just clip my rods up, get them to the spots that I think I've got an half decent chance of catching fish, which is tight to that far margin over there. And also possibly just to the right here as well, because I've seen a fish top just a few moments ago. So I'll get my stuff sorted and I'll get myself set up and I'll catch you in a short while. Hang on, mate, that is happy with that one. Right, we've been around to the car and got me barrel loaded up with all the gear and you can see the light levels are going already. So it's a good job that I'd clip those rods up before I'd got myself set up. Now, another good tip for you at this time of the year is to take a, a quick photograph with your phone of your swim, because if you get a, a bite in the dark, especially on somewhere like this, which goes really dark, I can remember fishing here before, you've got no idea which silhouette you need to be casting to, at least with a photographic memory of your swim, you've got something to go on. So with two spots out there in the distance, especially now when I've not got my glasses on, at least I've got a memory on my phone that I can refer to. Near enough is never good enough. You spend so long sitting there waiting for fish that uh, you know you get up in the morning, you know it's not quite right, you cast from last night, and you've blanked. All you're going to do is blame yourself for, for not getting it right in the first place. So if it takes me three, four, five, six casts, I'm going to do them. Now I know that this place is a good night walk as well, so. I need to get them right. And there's a little gap just amongst the pads, just off that island that I'm hoping to get into. And that's the spot. Got a drop down on it as well, so that's nice. So that's me right hander done. Well, I'm just gonna quickly sink the line. Light is going really quickly at the moment, so I'm conscious about that because I'm going to need to get me my um, left hander done as well. And that's probably a more trickier cast. So I'm just going to drop that rod on the floor for now. Get my other rod sorted. I've already got the bait on it. So this rod's going in the corner directly opposite me where you can see those pads that go around into a little bay. There is a bit of weed out there because I know that from when I was doing my rod earlier on. So I've got to make sure I feel for the drop. But it is a bit of a tricky cast as well, especially in the dark like this, so hopefully that is bang on. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it land, first cast on that rod and about three or four on the right hand rod. So those two are done there and the third rod, I've got to retie that and reset it. So uh, it's going to be put out in the dark probably, but I do know there's been fish topping 
in the open water over there. So it's not as tricky a cast that one isn't. So it's not important that they get it out now. What's more important is to get these rods set up, get the bivvy set up as in inside the bivvy because the dog's looking at me now saying, where's my bed? So I'll crack on. <laughs> So I've set the left hand rod, but you can see that little bay round there, it's actually got a cut through, through to the other side of the lake. And I do know from when I fished here last time, the fish in this lake, especially when they pick up from that corner, they go off like rockets. So it's important that your rods are nice and set into the ground. It's also nice and important that you set it so your bait runner is either turned off or the drag is nice and tight because I don't want those fish to go tearing through those pads. They're probably gonna be a little bit more brittle at this time of the year than they would be during the spring or the summer ones. But, you know, at the end of the day, if the fish is at the back of the pads, I've got lesser chance of getting it out of there than if it's just on the fringes. So that's nice and set. I've also got the foot ring of the, the rod, this side of the, the buzzer as well. So if it does pull really hard, the rod itself, it's not gonna go in. So it's just a case of getting on the rod as quick as I possibly can. So uh, let's see how we get on. <laughs> Well, you'd never believe it is early autumn because this is a mega morning. It must be 17, 18 degrees, nice and sunny, far contrast to what it was like last night. It was quite cold last night and uh, obviously we got here late. Didn't really sort of take much of an eye at what's going on on the lake. Just came to an area that I know is pretty consistent for doing fish. So this is a swim that's called a Brambles. So we can get a better look at it now. Bit of an historical swim. It's done lots of big fish over the years. You know, Selby Free Lakes. I don't know if you guys uh, know much about this lake. It's been on the carp fishing scene now for probably 40 years. I, I can remember people like Julian Cundiff writing about this venue in the late 80s when Carp World magazine started, which is probably something some of you younger guys have never heard of. But back in the day, this was a lake that did lots of 20 pounders. I can remember in the 80s, anybody in Yorkshire, if you caught a 20 pounder, then you did quite well. And I can remember people like Jules catching 20, 20 pounders in a season from here. So, you know, it's got some serious history. And back in around about 1994, 95, I think it did Yorkshire's second ever 40 pounder, which was a fish called Lucy. The old bailiff on it, uh, Gordon Fowler caught it, uh, very historical fish. But the lake then started to go into a little bit of a decline. It lost a lot of those bigger fish, those 30 pounders. And when I started fishing on it, it was, I think there was only about three or four 30 pounders in here. I don't know what's in here now, but it was probably about 15, 20 years ago when I fished on here. And since then it's been run as an exclusive syndicate, still absolutely gorgeous. You wouldn't believe it's set right next to an industrial estate. It's, it's pretty quiet, but to look at it, it's so picturesque. It's beautiful, especially in the margins with all these lovely fringe lily beds all the way around the lake. It's very mature. And, you know, as I say, it's been an established carp for, for, for many years. So many thanks to the guys for letting us come down here to do this little piece. And I need to get that said because, you know, it is a, it is a famous fishery, this, and I know the space is available. So if anybody's interested in joining the waiting list, then uh, now's the time to get involved. Now, the last time I fished this swim, I've just got to say this because it was such a rare thing that happened. You know, we all go carp fishing at night and you're casting out, you see the bats flying around. I can remember fishing in this swim and I actually uh, cast out just on dark and as my rod went through the air, it, it, it hit a bat and I killed a bat. <laughs> and killed it outright, but it's about five minutes later, I went on to catch a fish, which then got called the bat fish. It's only a mid 20, but um, that was the last time I fished in this room. But there's loads of nice features in this area. As you can see, you've got a cut through to the left there. This is Lake Three, which is why it's called Selby Free Lakes. There's now only two lakes on the syndicate because Lake One, as it used to be called, is now a day ticket lake. Only two and three are the syndicate lake, but they are joined. There's a cut through here. We've got a cut through straight in front of us. So there's loads of access points for fish to get into this area and there's loads of lovely overhanging trees as well. And that margin over um, in the distance there, that's really the sort of prime area. Although I haven't seen as many fish showing there as I have seen in open water since I've been here. So uh, I've now got a third rod out. I've got that just into open water. 
to where I've been seeing the fish. And what I'm going to do now is we're on about nearly 10 o'clock. I'm going to redo my rods because it's that time of the year, and this is this is this is generalising now. It's that time of the year when I tend to think you get more nighttime bites. Autumn time, you tend to see more bites during the hours of darkness than you do during the day. So um, I'm, I'm a regular really for doing redoing my rods at this time of the day. So I'm just going to redo both me, my left under and my left under of those two, the ones I put out last night, because they just need a bit of a freshen up just in case, you know, we have got a chance of getting a bite today. So I'll crack on with that and Vinny will show you some lovely shots of the lake as I do it. Right, we're going to talk a little bit now about catching big fish because everybody loves big fish. You know, I don't care who you are. I know lots of guys like getting lots of bites and lots of runs, but everybody loves big fish. And it's always the guys that catch the big fish that everybody remembers. They don't really remember the guy who's the top rod catching loads of little ones. Now, when it comes to catching big fish, obviously, to start with, it's a bit of a mind game because you need to decide in your own mind whether you want to target big fish or if you want to just get bites because they're two completely different things and they need a completely different approach and it also relates to the bait that you're using as well because generally speaking if you want lots of bites then you're going to be fishing with what we call bit fishing which is fishing with little pva bags fishing with stringers fishing with bright yellow pop-ups or bright orange and bright pinks and fishing for one bite at a time with little mesh bags full of um, pellets and small bits and pieces basically that's 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 what we generally sort of associate with with getting bites but when it comes to catching big fish this is where you really need to in my mind anyway you really need to turn to the boilie only approach because big carp the reason they're big is because they're greedy and they love food and this time of the year especially the autumn time i know it's nice and sunny today we're in late september it is very very warm at the moment it's about 17 18 degrees but in the next few weeks, the temperatures are going to drop and what you're going to see is a massive shift in the feeding habits of carp. You're going to see a lot of the smaller carp stop feeding, the smaller, younger fish, and you're going to start to see the older fish, the big ones, just being left alone. And they're the ones that you're likely to catch if you stick with your fishing over the next few weeks, because I've seen it happen on loads of different lakes. And there's a great example I can give to you here is that a few years ago, I fished in Austria on a lake called the Forest Lake with my old mate, Steve Briggs. And before we went to the lake, Bill Cotton from Nutribates, the old Nutribates boss, he was over there with his mate Kev Richardson and they had the lake to themselves. They had something like about 40 odd bites with 140 pounder between them. Now this particular lake, it contains a lot of big fish. And when me and Steve went there, the week that we were there, the temperatures dropped. There was a lot less activity from the fish. I think we ended up with about eight or nine bites between us during the week, but nearly all of the fish that we caught were over 40 pound including some 50 pounders and including a 60 pounder as well. So the point I'm getting at here is there'll be a point on every single lake, whether it's in Austria, England, Germany, or wherever, where you'll start to see the smaller, younger fish start to feed less and you'll then just be left with these big ones. And if you look at some of the historical catches from over the years, a lot of big fish caught to, in, in England anyway, during November, December, right up to the, when Christmas starts, lots of big fish, people sitting there for hours at a time, waiting for that one bite and eventually it comes and it's a 50 pounder. That's a really rare fish. So this is the time of the year to do that. And when it comes to bait choice, in my mind from the DNA range, this year I'm using mostly the bug. That is a really good proven big fish bait. You've only got to look at some of the captures that's been taken on it during the course of this year. It started with Roger Bacon catching a 60 pounder from Grenville's and throughout the year, there's just been one after another, loads of big fish, including this week. I've seen some really big fish caught from this lake where we are now at Selby Free Lakes in the DNA feed only a few days ago. So. You know, that, that's my, my first choice at the moment. But historically, the other good bait that's in the range is the SLK, which is a really, really good bait. I remember going to Spitfire Pool in Norfolk a few years ago, and the lake had been quite pressured before my, uh, my trip. There was a lot of uneaten bait in the margins, 
and I went there thinking, cool, what do I do in this kind of situation? And I just used an SLK um, hook bait and I ended up catching that fish. And I only used one single hook bait out there, but that fish, particularly difficult fish to catch, decided to take the SLK. Now there's loads of examples of, of SLK doing big fish consistently. There's loads of examples of some of the other baits in the range doing big fish, especially the PB wafters, you know, the bright yellows that we talk about, because you are always gonna have a chance, if you're fishing for bites, you're always gonna have a chance of catching big fish as well. Especially, you know, if you're fishing um, a really heavily stocked lake where there's a lot of big fish in there, the numbers work out that eventually you will get through to those bigger fish. But I'm talking now really about targeting specific big fish and just trying to get those ones to feed, then your approach needs to be completely different. So this year, it's the bug for me, and that's what I'm using today. I'm using the bug in the swim that I'm fishing at the moment. And from just speaking to the owner, Steve, or the bailiff, I should say, Steve, he was telling me that there's been a guy in this swim that I'm fishing only last week and he'd done really well on the bug. So I know he's got a good track record. And I also know that uh, there's a big fish in this lake, which is a bit common, about 38 pounds. It's not been caught for a while. And as I said, right at the start of this piece, it's due out. There's, uh, it's not been caught for quite a while. So I'm on the right bait. I'm in an area that's been doing bites. And yes, I'm not fishing with a, a bites approach of trying to get lots of bites. I'm sitting there hoping that one fish will come along and you never know. It might be that uh, that big, big common if I'm lucky, but I uh, hope that's given you a little bit of an insight into what types of baits to use in the DNA range. Stick with the boilies, get them pre-baited, and you're gonna be in with a good shot catching some big ones. Well, we're in. Steve the Baelish has come round and uh, showed me his little spot. And it's done as a bite mid-afternoon, so out of the blue really, but there's a lot of weed about. And I can feel the fish grating through the weed all the time. I am getting a little bit of line back, slowly. So it is coming ever so slowly through the weed. Yeah, it's come over quite a lot of bait as well. Did the rod about 10 o'clock, Steve came round and showed us the kind of area where they've been getting bites from recently. The deeper spots when I, I used to fish on the lake myself and uh, yeah, the old bug boilies. Put a few spoms out there. And we've got a daytime bite. So let's see if we can get it in. I have got my leads really lightly clipped into place, but sometimes when you're fishing in weed, you get a bit of that algae that blocks up the, um, the lead clip and you know the next minute the lead stays in place. So you know at the end of the day we've got to fish, I can feel it kicking. Yeah, so this one's fallen to one of the glugged wafters, bug wafters. Glugged in the bug syrup over a better, well, probably about half a dozen spawns of bait, so quite a bit of bait. But there's definitely a load of weed on this. And every now and again, I can feel a kick, so I'm hoping that the fish is still there. It was, whether it's still there now or not, I don't know, because I'm just reeling in a big ball of weed. But you know what it's like sometimes, you get that ball of weed over the fish's face and uh, they don't do anything. you just got to keep pressure on, drag in the ball of weed and net the fish if it's still there. It was a few moments ago anyway, but it's really not doing anything. I kept feeling a little tap, 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 but there's a load of weed there. You can see the, look at the fizz coming off. I suspect it's just a big ball of weed. There it is. That is a big ball of weed. <laughs> Let's hope the fish is still there. Need an hand here, Vin. <laughs> Ooh, it's taking the line out. Mm. 
That was a big ball of weed, isn't it? Cheers, Steve. Who's going what round in them pads now? Thanks, Dave. I'm not sure to get, any, get very far with this without you. Cheers, mate. Now he's in the pads. <laughs> let, him, uh, let him break away from those pads if he can. He's gone around there somewhere. Try and wingle that out. Oh, I think you've got it off it now. I think I might have a direct line on him now. I've got him through though, by the looks of it. Right, we're on it, we're on now. Here we go. We got him. Woo! Well, thank you, Steve. Without your help, we would not have got that one. Not only with the spot, but also with uh, getting rid of the weeds. So. We've got a fish anyway, so. That's a common. Nice, very nice. Get off, dog. Not bad, Vinster. <laughs> <laughs> You know when they say scaly bangers? Well, this is definitely not one of them. Should we call it an old character of Selby Three Lakes? It's probably around from the, the Three Lakes days. I know it's only two lakes, this Syndicate Lake, but this one is definitely an old warrior of a carp. It's got a few deformities on him. He's got a kink in his back. He's got half a tail, but it's a carp. And that's what we came here to catch, so. There you go, caught over a bed of bug boilies thanks to some fantastic local knowledge from Steve the bailiff who puts on the spot so thanks again mate proper old character carp that one is well it might be nice and sunny today but we are in the back end of September and anytime soon we're going to be moving into the autumn period and the autumn time is absolutely brilliant for catching big carp so what I've got for you now is five of my top tips for catching big carp in the autumn and tip one is to go in with boilies big carp absolutely love boilies they're really big fish because they're very hungry fish so don't be afraid to stick quite a bit of boilies out there find a big fish bait that works for you. Now, if you're interested in getting lots of bites, then the pellet approach and the bright yellow hook baits and stuff, that will always work for, for getting bites. But when it comes to big carp, then definitely go in with the boilies. That's my first tip for you. So tip two is to use a bait that's got a proven track record with big fish. And in the DNA range, it's got to be SLK. Over the years, that bait has caught so many big fish from all around the UK and also overseas as well. The reason why, well, there's obviously something in it that stimulates the big fish. Generally speaking, big fish are older fish. There's something about um, that bait that stimulates those older fish, whether it's a certain ingredient or a, a certain chemical or what, I don't know. It's probably down to Jason who designed the bait, but we know through carp fishing history that certain baits have a track record of producing big fish consistently. And in the DNA range, it's SLK for me. Tip three is to move off your bright yellows and bright oranges and bright pink hook baits and go into a match the hatch approach because yes, we all like to catch lots of fish, but you tend to see when the autumn period comes, a lot of those smaller carp, they switch off the feed. Yes, of course you can still catch them from some lakes that's got a high stocking density, but we're talking now about the really difficult carp to catch in the really low stock lakes. They're the venues when you tend to see the smaller fish really switch off the feed and you're just left with those big ones. And the big ones, you've been baiting up with boilies, they're the baits that you want on your hook. So match the hatch. If you're using SLK as your freebies, then use SLK as your hook baits too. 
Tip four is to get on with the pre-baiting because pre-baiting works. Take it from me. The more you put out, the better it works as well. And it's all about consistency, really. So if you've only got a little bit of bait at a time, you can't afford to, to bulk buy your bait, just get it into your spots. Get those carp used to picking up the bait on a regular basis from the areas that you're going to be fishing. Obviously, the more that you put out, the better it's going to be for you. And, you know, when it comes to bait sizes, well, you can use anything at this time of the year because, as I say, you're fishing for big fish. You're fishing at a time when the majority of the smaller fish have switched off. So you can even go down to your eights, your tens, your 12 mil boilies. But for me personally, I do prefer the 18 millers. They're the ones that really get the big carp going. My final tip is dedication, because what you're gonna see anytime soon is a change in the weather. The temperatures are gonna cool down. You're gonna to start to see some of the carp anglers on the lakes disappearing. They won't have the rods out again until next spring leaving you just to sit there on the lakes and make the most of it. Because believe me, when the lakes are quiet, this is when the real big ones start to come out to feed. And not only do they come out to feed, when you get them on the bank, they look absolutely spectacular in their awesome colors. So stick with your fishing, keep your pre-bait going out there. Use something you're confident in, like an SLK for big fish. And anytime soon, if you keep going, hopefully you're gonna get rewarded with some, some really nice carp on the bank.